Okay, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Professor Kono from Tokyo, Japan. Uh, I'll talk about the surgery for vestibular schwannomas and other the other CPN tumors. About COI, there's nothing uh, to declare. Uh, before starting my presentation, I'd like to introduce myself and our institute shortly. I'm a chairman of uh, Department of Neurosurgery of Tokyo Medical University Hospital. I'm a scurvy surgeon and I used to be a disciple of Professor Keiji Sano and Professor Tomio Sasaki. And uh, I'm a once active member and a WFNS educational course faculty member. At our Skull Bay Center of Tokyo Medical University Hospital, we perform surgery for CPN tumors, two or four cases per week, totaling about 150 cases per year. My personal experience of surgery for CPN tumor is uh, more than 2,000, including uh, 1,400 vestibular schwannomas. Uh, as you know, there are various surgical approaches for CPN tumors, and uh, I have been selecting these approaches for more than 25 years. For vestibular schwannomas, uh, I uh, used a uh, lateral sigmoid approach in most cases, uh, in contrast with the other CPN tumors, selecting uh, lateral sigmoid. Uh, transmastoid, uh, middle cranial fossa, and uh, trans or paracondylar uh, approaches like this. Mastoidectomy procedure was used in 240 cases for these diseases, meningioma, uh, epidermal cysts, uh, facial nerve schwannomas. Middle cranial fossa approaches was used in 240 cases for these diseases. Combined transpetrosal approach was used in more than 100 cases for, for these diseases. I talk about the vestibular schwannoma surgery, and CP angle skull based meningioma surgery, and surgery for jugulofromian tumors. And lastly, I talk about the mastoidectomy our method. Now we are going into the vestibular schwannoma surgery. In our series, uh, CUS4 uh, with brainstem deformity or over midline cases accounts for more than 1,000. So most of our patients had large tumors. These are small tumors uh, in young patients for hearing preservation surgery. I think surgical policy is very important. And basically, we are aiming at total removal in every case, but uh, some tumor resection leaving a tiny fragment on the nerve, uh, facial nerve to avoid the passive facial nerve policy is acceptable. But Intermetal part of the tumor is totally removed to prevent recurrence. Uh, we routinely use the interoperative continuous facial nerve monitoring with direct electrical stimulation of root exudon of the facial nerve to avoid facial nerve policy. So our policy is no recurrence and no facial nerve policy. In this case, I left the tumor around here, 98% uh, resection without any facial nerve policy. In this case, I left the tumor around here, uh, but we can't see the remnant on the MRI, and 99% resection without any facial nerve policy. Uh, we can't see the remnant, 99% resection without any facial nerve policy. The key points in vestibular schwannoma surgery, I think, are the continuous facial nerve monitoring, wider and deep opening of the posterior wall of the internal auditory canal, 
seven gates and three dissection planes in tumor removal, stabbing uh, and lifting of the tumor from the CPM system. About the interoperative monitorings, uh, we use three types of facial monitoring, free running spontaneous EMG, occasional direct electrical stimulation, and continuous direct electrical stimulation. For hearing monitoring, we use ABR and CNAP, and other monitorings like these. About the interoperative facial monitoring, we use the electrified microsurgical dissectors for occasional direct stimulation as well as uh, NIMU system. And this uh, continuous direct stimulation with one hertz is actually a real-time monitoring during tumor dissection. We reported this method nine years ago in ACTA Neurochirurgical after identification of the root exome zone of the facial nerve, I placed an electrode for continuous facial nerve monitoring. This is the control before tumor dissection. Sudden decrease in all facial mass responses occurred during tumor dissection. After stopping the operation, all facial mass responses recovered rapidly. This is our setting of back bench position with skin incision like this, recently L-shape. Drilling of the posterior wall of the IAC should be sufficient enough to expose the dura mater by 180 degrees to allow optimal pro provision of light, as well to get the space to enable the use of many kinds of dissectors. Seven gates I call are the fundus, both sides of the IAC, both shoulders. This is the important area for continuous facial monitoring, and this is the area for internal decompression. Uh, we believe most of the vestibular schwannomas are subarachnoid tumor, so uh, after moving the double layers of the arachnoid membrane toward the brainstem, uh, there is some very thin arachnoid membrane on the tumor. So about the tumor capsule, uh, Professor Sasaki wrote that the tumor capsule consists of vesperal nerve fibers and perineurium. So this is the ideal dissection plane for tumor total removal and preservation for uh, of uh, facial and cochlear nerve functions. This is our case, and after total removal of the tumor, we can see the facial and cochlear nerve beyond the membrane derived from the vestibular nerve. It's not an arachnoid because we can see veins. About the three dissection planes, this is the arachnoid membrane, this is the uh, facial and cochlear nerve, and uh, this is the membrane from the, derived from the vestibular nerve and tumor itself. So we can select three dissection prints like, like this. So right side, uh, so after internal decompression, uh, I found the root exosome of the facial nerve and I started the uh, continuous facial nerve monitoring, internal decompression. I'm following the facial nerve. I'm opening the internal auditory canal widely and deeply. Using uh, electrified microsurgical dissectors, I found the fa facial nerve. So this is a very thin cochlear nerve, and this is a membrane from the, derived from the vestibular nerve, different planes. And this is a, a naked, a transparent facial nerve. And I'm leaving the uh, vestibular nerve fibers on the naked facial nerve. So these are the uh, different planes. And also, I'm um, so leaving a tiny tumor on the 
uh, facial nerve. So we can see the three dissection planes at the same time. And also in this case, uh, we can see the, the arachnoid membrane uh, beyond the tumor. So uh, this must be the perineurium of the vestibular nerve covering the facial nerve and I left the tumor around here. In this case with a very small tumor. So if I elevate the tumor, we can see the membrane from the vestibular nerve like this. We can see it. In this case, we can see the facial nerve beyond the membrane from the vestibular nerve. Uh, I'm moving the tumor like this. And we can see the membrane from the vestibular nerve covering facial nerve. The tumor was totally removed. And we can see the electrode for continuous facial nerve monitoring. I'm elevating the tumor very gently uh, using a cot uh, such a cotton ball as a cushion like this. So we can see the facial and the intermediate nerve beyond the membrane from the vestibular nerve. I'm elevating the tumor and I cut uh, the membrane from the vestibular nerve and so I didn't touch the facial or cochlear nerve uh, directly. So this is our uh, set for microsurgical instruments for skull base surgery. And I love using SS forceps. Right side. So I'm doing a pressure dissection using Kamiyama uh, scissors. And this is the so SS forceps, and I'm scraping and uh, opening the brace. We can see the widespread facial nerve grasping. Uh, open the brace, so we can do everything with this simple forceps. And finally, tumor was totally removed. Uh, we can see the fifth nerve, facial nerve and six nerve and electrode for continuous facial nerve monitoring. Next, CP angle tumors, meningiomas, sorry. Uh, I approach from three directions uh, like this. Retrosigmoid approach, uh, most frequently, combined transpetrosal approach and transpetrosal, uh, anterior transpetrosal approach. This is the distribution of types of uh, CP angle skull base meningiomas of our uh, patients. Uh, P2 tentory or P trus jugular, uh, posterior P trus sinodural angle, uh, cryobal, uh, foramen magnum. About the approach selection. So for P2 or Peter tentorial meningioma, we use the uh, combined transpetrosal approach most frequently. For tentorial, uh, I use the, the anterior transpetrosal approach mainly. And for the other types, uh, so I, I did the retrosigmoid approach uh, totally uh, like this. For Peter Kleiber or Peter tentorial meningiomas, we use the combined transpetrosal approach, leaving uh, semicircular canals. In this case, with the left uh, left Peter tentorial meningioma, after removing the mastoid surface, I'm doing the mastoidectomy like this. I'm thinning the covering bone. Uh, video doesn't work so well. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, we can see the semicircular canals. I'm cutting the middle fossa dura and uh, also I'm cutting the tentorium. So uh, we can see the seventh and the eighth cranial nerves here. Internal decompression and we can see the fourth and the fifth 
cranial nerves. And I'm opening the internal auditory canal, seventh and eighth cranial nerves here. So we can see the basal artery, sixth nerve, fourth nerve, third nerve, pituitary stalk. So tumor was nearly totally removed. Uh, next, uh, in this case with the petal cribal meningioma, I selected the combined transpetrosal approach, but uh, venous drainage it so much into the pterygoid plexus, so it's so-called a dangerous pattern for middle force approach. So to preserve venous drainage, I used a modified anterior transpetrosal approach uh, reported from the KO University group. This is the standard anterior transpetrosal approach, uh, epidural approach, and this is the modification of the anterior transpetrosal approach uh, with uh, subdural and epidural combination. So I use the uh, transmastoid and uh, modified anterior transpetrosal approach, combined uh, uh, approach. So we can see the venous systems, uh, what we want to uh, preserve. So I cut the posterior half dura and I'm uh, drilling the Kawase's uh, triangle. And this is the sub, uh, epidural and this is the subdural area. And we can see the venous systems. I cut the tentorium uh, and, uh, and we can see the fourth nerve and uh, I'm elevating the uh, tumor. And this is the fifth nerve. Finally, I saw the uh, third nerve. So tumor was uh, nearly totally removed. So uh, jugular foramen tumors. So uh, jugular foramen schwannomas uh, accounts for uh, nearly half uh, of the jugular foramen tumors I operated. So I'll talk about the most frequent jugular foramen schwannomas. According to the type classification from the Professor Fukushima's group, uh, for type A, intradural tumor, uh, we use the lateral sigmoid approach. And for type B, dumbbell-shaped tumor, or uh, type C, triple dumbbell-shaped tumor, we use the transmastoid, transjugular approach. For type C, I add uh, the high cervical exposure. Regarding the roots for jugular from and tumors, lateral sigmoid approach has two options of lateral sigmoid suprajugular approach and infra sigmoid approach. And transmastoid transjugular approach has also two options of uh, uh, transmastoid suprajugular approach and trans sigmoid approach. Using this uh, illustration of uh, triple dumbbell shaped uh, tumor. So this is a so lateral sigmoid approach and uh, lateral sigmoid suprajugular and infra sigmoid optional approach and transmastoid suprajugular approach and transmastoid trans sigmoid approach like this. Uh, so we reported uh, uh, about the lateral sigmoid uh, suprajugular approach, as uh, Ken Matsushima uh, uh, said. And in this case, with the intradural type, uh, we use the lateral sigmoid approach, left side. So after identific identification of the vagus nerve, I started the uh, continuous vagus nerve monitoring. We can see eighth nerve and fifth nerve and seventh nerve here. So after uh, total removal of the cisternal portion, uh, I am drilling the uh, superior part of the jugular foramen. 
So we can see the jugular foramen here. And I'm taking the uh, foraminal part of the tumor. So this is the final view. So to, uh, tumor was uh, nearly totally removed. And this is the area of bony drilling. Vagus nerve monitoring was preserved 44% uh, and uh, lower cranial nerves was, uh, functions were okay and the hearing improved uh, from the class D to class A. About the infrasigmoid approach, uh, so after jugular, uh, drilling of the jugular process and uh, after cutting the condylar emissary vein and the marginal sinus, Elevation of the sigmoid sinus allows us to enter the jugular foramen. Left side, uh, in a dumbbell shaped tumor. So, firstly, I did the partial mastoidectomy, and we can see the jugular valve and the condylar emissary vein and the internal jugular vein. And uh, from, uh, through the lateral sigmoid approach, I took the tumor tense nerve here. So after that, I cut the condylar emissary vein and I'm doing the elevation of the sigmoid sinus and I can reach in the foraminal part of the tumor like this. So, a uh, hearing disturbance improved to the normal condition. So, about the trans sigmoid approach, many big names use this approach. And um, in this case, with a triple dumbbell shaped tumor with a large extracranial part with a left sigmoid sinus occlusion, I used the trans sigmoid approach. After high cervical exposure, I am drilling the mastoid area. And uh, so we can see the large extracranial part here, uh, 11th nerve and uh, internal jugular vein here. I cut the internal jugular, uh, jugular vein and reflect it toward, towards rostrally. And I'm ligating the sigmoid sinus and cut it. Uh, so this is a trans-sigmoid approach. Now I'm so approaching to the extracranial part. So tumor was totally removed. And this is a big tumor cavity here. So uh, in this case with a dumbbell shaped uh, tumor, so I use the trans mastoid supra approach. After mastoidectomy, so this is the sigmoid sinus here. I'm drilling around the uh, jugular valve. So this is the foraminal part of the tumor. And this is the jugular valve. I'm cutting into the posterior fossa dura. And we can see the cisternal portion of the tumor. So we can see the 10th and 11th nerve here. And I started the continuous vagus nerve monitoring. So this must be the uh, glossopharyngeal schwannoma. So uh, internal decompression first. So we can see the seventh and the eighth cranial nerves here. Next I'm approaching to the foraminal part. This is jigger above.
So finally, uh, tumor was uh, totally removed. So uh, vagus nerve monitoring was preserved 93%. Uh, lower cranial nerve uh, function was okay and the hearing was preserved. So about the continuous vagus nerve monitoring, we reported uh, this method recently. And uh, if we preserve uh, more than 30% of the M max, uh, the lower cranial nerve uh, function would be good. Lastly, uh, la mastoidectomy, our method, uh, we make outer bar holes outside, outside the operative field behind the sigmoid sinus. And these outer bar holes make us possible to dissect the bit, between the sigmoid sinus and the covering bone first. And after that, we can remove the covering bone uh, using many kinds of longules. So this method is quite safe and speedy for exposing the sigmoid sinus. Left side, uh, these are the outer bar holes. Uh, video doesn't work, uh, sorry. But uh, we can see the uh, little, uh, so lateral semicircular canal. And so uh, I connected uh, two outer bar holes and I'm doing dissection between the sigmoid sinus and the covering bone first. and exposing the sigmoid sinus and uh, so we can see the semicircular canals here and I'm cutting the uh, middle meningeal artery and we can see the uh, GSPN and I'm doing anterior transpetrosal approach so this is a typical combined transpetrosal approach uh, view so we should care about the preservation of venous drainage uh, if I cut the tentorium. So we, when we cut the SPS, uh, not here, uh, but here, uh, ventrally to the entry point of this uh, petrosal vein. So uh, it's, uh, it's method uh, from the Osaka City University group. So in this case with the left uh, CPN epidermal cyst, so I use the combined transpetrosal approach and uh, this is the mastoid emissary vein. And uh, we can see the GSPN and I'm doing the anterior transpetrosal approach. And we should remove this area uh, to enlarge the surgical field. This is the endolymphatic sac here. And I am cutting the posterior fossa dura, uh, preserving endolymphatic sac. So I'm searching for the petrosal vein and found it. So I ligated uh, the SPS ventrally to the uh, entry point of the petrosal vein. We can see the fourth nerve here. Seventh and eighth cranial nerves here. And we can see the sixth nerve and uh, we should take the tumor, uh, the membrane uh, to uh, to avoid recurrence. And uh, finally, I opened the Meckel's cave and I took the tumor totally. So post-operative course was uneventful. So in conclusions, uh, key points in, uh, of, of surgery, I think are the continuous facial monitoring in vestibular show normal surgery, selection of surgical approaches in CP angle and scalar based meningioma surgery, and selection of surgical approaches and continuous vagus nerve monitoring uh, in surgery for jugular foramen tumors. Thank you for your attention.
wonderful lecture. Thank Truly you. amazing and ex ex amazing expertise. Thanks for sharing with us. Um, we have one, uh, a couple of questions for you, Dr. Connor. One is about um, where to find the electrode for continuous face and nerve monitoring. Um, uh, what, I guess they're asking where, where to find it. Uh, do you have any recommendations or tips uh, about that? A uh, Japanese company provides its uh, 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 unique, unique medical, unique okay. medical. Mm. I know, you know, you mentioned Dr. Jackler a couple of times in your lecture, which I've had the privilege and the honor of working with during my two years at Stanford. He's a truly master of this field and I enjoy very much working with him. And he used to employ continuous facial nerve monitoring, but he doesn't do any longer. I am not sure exactly why. Maybe we can have him come up at some point and explain. But uh, there is another question about what are your recommendations on closure following mastoidectomies? Do you like to put the outer cortical bone back yes. in? Do you like to do a cosmetic mastoidectomy? Yes, yes, that's true. And uh, of course, uh, also I use the uh, pedicle, uh, so subgaleal flap uh, to prevent uh, CSF leak. Of course, is it pedicle to the occipital artery posteriorly, or is it pedicle to the STA anteriorly? Uh, no, no, uh, just a vas uh, not a, not a vascularized flap, but uh, so just a uh, so pedicle the flap. The, okay, like a, you mean like a like a graft? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Very good. Excellent. Wonderful lecture. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, let's move on.